Welcome to another episode of Bourbon and Data Breaches, where we cover five of the most interesting data breaches from this last week. And one of our favorite bourbons, I'm Steve. Vivia. I'm Sean. Hey guys, this is Miguel. This is Frank. Okay, great. Devia, what happened this week? Okay, guys, uh, it is a very spicy week this week. It's been a spicy week for the last couple of weeks. First one up is Ferrari says ransomware attack exposed customer data. Um, Italian sports car maker Ferrari said on Monday that a threat act, uh, actor had demanded a ransom related to customer contact details that may have been exposed in a ransomware attack. Just want to quickly add, Hack Notice actually had this breach in its database before this event happened. And I think it was like a month or two prior to uh, March 24th. Uh, what do you guys have to say about this? So ransomware event, Ferrari, obviously bad for Ferrari, uh, bad for the brand. Um, you know, we feel bad for them. Which, which, uh, which gang was it, did it say? Uh, yeah, let me. I think that's that, that was uh, Ransom X. Ransom X, X. yeah. So, yeah. not not a terribly well known gang, but one we've been tracking for a few years now. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no one's safe. Obviously, Ferrari uh, is going to have a lot of reputational damage from this. Um, what do you What do you know about this, Frank? Um, they took some time to clear this out. Um, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, this was posted on the Ransom X blog last September, October. I got a pitch in here uh, as a Ferrari fan that actually watches the races in Formula One, and I follow Ferrari. I've been following for many, many years. The good thing is that if you're if you're holding information uh, from customers from Ferrari, the good thing is that I don't think it'll be that many. I mean, it cannot be a big number. I mean, it's not a for or I don't know Chevrolet or like a big brand. It's like a very small brand. I've been to the Ferrari factory and it's really small and artisanal. So I don't see a lot of people really worrying about this. If you've been to the factory, then you might be included in this. <laughs> yeah, pro yeah. probably. <laughs> if they have a picture of me, probably it's leaked somewhere. I think what's interesting is, uh, first of all, I think it's a pretty smart attack when you think about the type of clientele and customers that Ferrari mm -hmm. has. You would imagine a lot of executives, a lot of people that you know, you're getting personal information from. I think it's great fodder for going out for folks that do have money. They've got a, a, a set of customer data that equates to folks that have money, whether it's from a business standpoint or a personal standpoint. Yeah, they, these yeah. these are high net worth individuals, we would assume, or or they're just massively in debt. Uh, e either way, like they're prime targets for uh, fraud. Yeah, quickly going to share that we did have this breach in October 2020, I believe. Uh, so that's, it's been a while. Um, and then it resurfaced last year. So, you know, Ferrari, that's, that's just kind of crazy. Okay, I'm going to move on to story number two. We have a lot, of, we have a spicy roster of stories, which I really want to make sure that we cover all of them. Um, number two, you guys, Klopp ransomware. Um, Klopp ransomware may have infected even more victims than previously thought. Um, they say that no one knows the exact number yet, uh, but they revealed that it abused a flaw in Go Anywhere mm -hmm. and stole data from 130 companies, high profile companies. And this was also in hack notice mm -hmm. uh, before this big reveal. So what do you guys have to say about this? I mean, go anywhere. Whenever you're trusting someone else with all of your authentication and access, guess what? Uh, you have a single point of failure. And if you can break into someone like go anywhere, you can break into all the companies trusting them. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising. We've seen this before. We saw this recently with Okta. So there's a real risk if you, you know, you, you can't just outsource security uh, because the security doesn't go away. I think uh, on, I guess it was yesterday, I started looking through, I think there was maybe 40 new breach notices just yesterday that were related to Klopp ransomware. And the interesting thing to me is they, they do have a part of them that's associated with high profile companies. But as I was looking through that list, I think they were a little more opportunistic and there were a lot of organiza organizations on there that you wouldn't recognize their brand. And so just highlights the need that, you know, nobody's safe out there and really, really an active day and seeing this stuff come across in near real time lets us know that we, we've got a beat on 
getting people early detection as it relates to breaches because a lot of these I went out on the internet to see if there's anything about there and there wasn't anything yet. I imagine in a couple of days, some of those will be showing up in articles. Yeah, and what's interesting is reporters started writing about this, but then reporters started being like, oh, they breached like some victims and then those victims were from like 2021. Klopp, uh, unfortunately, they, they don't disclose exactly when these things happened. Uh, and so they don't actually include any dates on like when they became a victim. They just suddenly show up on the Klopp site. Um, and so that that's a, a perpetual issue is trying to figure out like, is this something new? Is this something old? Like, is this uh, just a rumor? Did it really happen? Uh, and uh, these days, the best source for knowing who's been breached, unfortunately, is the hacker. And hackers aren't as meticulous with like their note taking. <laughs> yeah, that, unfortunately, they're a step behind like Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, and with that, we're going to take a bourbon break. So today we have a great bourbon. Very excited to have this bourbon. We've covered Old Forester before, uh, but this is one of the Old Forester uh, older recipes. So Old Forester, they're known for having different recipes based on the different years that they uh, introduced the recipe. This is their 1897. Uh, it's bottled and bond, so it's uh, aged for at least four years. They produce it, uh, and then it's 50% uh, alcohol. Uh, and Divya, what do you know about this? For hey, guys. Uh, so I am going to share my screen. Um, Old Forester 1897 Bottled and Bond. Uh, this is their website. I'm going to read off the aroma, taste, and finish notes. Um, aroma, it says it's a robust, intense caramel taste. It says rich vanilla with roasted coffee notes, spiced dark fruit, and mature oak, mouth filling, <laughs> sweet and intense. And the finish is deep fruit, spice, and oak notes layered over dark caramel and vanilla, big and bold. Um, going to total wine right now. So product highlights. Kentucky sharp at first, but softens quickly with hints of oak, sweet corn, and rye grain character. Spicy with soft vanilla and light orange notes. It ends with a kick of heat, but it would be disappointing if it didn't. Reviews seem to be pretty satisfying. Somebody says it's a great blend of flavors, uh, but I'm interested in y'all's review. Uh, so, Steve and Sean, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think the uh, the spice at the end does it. It uh, comes together. The finish doesn't last real long, but it gives you a little pop at the end. I, I think it's nice. So this is one of the premium Old Foresters. Uh, this is not their their like signature or like their their birthday release. They have some very expensive ones, but this is one of the higher uh, dollar bottles that they produce. Uh, but we got it at the dollar sale at Twin Liquors. So we got it for about 20 bucks off. Um, so that was pretty great. Uh, I think that this is just a really solid bourbon. Um, you, the, there's, there's some spice at the end. There's some heat, but not a lot for something that's 100 proof. Um, uh, I think it's smooth. I think it's sweet. I think that it's got an interesting flavor. It's got a lingering finish. Um, I think it's a solid sipping bourbon, like no question there. Um, it's not the most like raved Old Forester. Old Forester has some special releases. They also have the 1920, which is usually considered one of their like better recipes. Uh, but I think this is solid. I mean, for uh, bottled in bonds, which is usually a, a pretty uh, a pretty good bet. Um, you know, a lot of care goes into it. Um, I think that this is just a really good sipping bourbon. You can easily like mix it, but I think you're going to lose out on, on a lot of the nuance in the flavor. And, and this has plenty. Can you hand me the bottle real quick? Yeah. Sure. So according to Steve's meter, as you can see, this is a great bourbon because it's almost empty. Um, if Steve doesn't like a bourbon, it's probably going to come to the office when it's like, over here. So Steve Meter approved. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got a little bit left in the office, but probably not for long. Um, yeah, it's it's a great buy, and uh, it's an especially good buy at the dollar sale for Twin Liquors. <laughs> nice.
not sponsored. Not, not sponsored, sponsored yet. <laughs> and that's been the bourbon break. Okay, so these stories now are just going to get crazier and crazier. So you guys feel free to go ahead and argue. Story number three. Uh, we're going to be talking about chat GPT. Um, chat GPT suffers first data breach, exposes personal information. Just as trouble in chatbot paradise, opening eyes, uh, GPT suffered a data breach on March 20th. Um, what are their fixes going forward? Uh, one thing I want to mention is that the breach came in, uh, it happened on March 20th, and they posted on their blog post by March 24th. That's good. So that's pretty cool. That's my opinion. What are y'all's uh, thoughts? I I love ChatGPT. Um, I use it for lots of stuff. Uh, we also use uh, OpenAI's uh, GitHub Copilot. So, like, the breach sucks, and I hope that they really ramp up their security uh because the fact of the matter is i'm not going to stop using it after a single breach um and, and that like it's just it's too good like yeah. it, it's like hey like you can use us but every month we're going to leak your personal information i'm like uh, okay like small price to pay yeah yeah i, I don't like it but i'm going to accept it so what do you think about the questions and stuff people ask for prompts? Well, so like, how did the breach occur? Because did it occur by asking questions? Because that would be bad, right? Like, if it was like, hey, chat GPT, what's Sean's social security number? And if it actually told you that, then that, that'd be like a quality control problem. I, I assume it happened through like alternative systems. Source bug. Mm. led to breach discoveries. That doesn't really mean anything to me. Yeah. Um, it's like a technical thing, I guess. Yeah, I, I think what's uh, on that same line of thought, I think what's interesting to me, just like Google search can be a, a portal into our thoughts, right? The content in terms of what people are asking really is different than this objective you know, metric of, hey, I put a username, I put a password, and those are very defined. However, when you start getting into what what am I thinking? What am I looking for? And then combining that with a breach, I, I find that relatively scary. Well, there is a tweet that says that um, a small percentage of users were able to see the titles of other users' conversation history. Um, That's bad. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's it's undeniably bad. And I will probably be using it later today. <laughs> How do I write a cease and desist letter? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, Miguel, Frank, have you played around with the AI? I, I gotta... haven't I haven't played around with Chat uh with Chat GB. I mean, and I get uh messages from all friends which arguably know little to nothing about IT and they tell me, hey, this could do your work <laughs> for you. You won't have to work anymore. And I, I would always go, Yeah, well, I mean, luckily or maybe not that luckily, that's not the case, but uh I know that it's been Really impressing a lot of people, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it. But uh, I really haven't I've been taking a look at it. But I know that that it's all the rage in the fury these days, at least yeah. with people not very savvy with IT. So Miguel, Miguel, I I actually think so. I, I would I would challenge you a little bit because like I'm I'm tech savvy and I use Chat GPT for the annoying non technical stuff I have to do. Right, like. If I have to write like a stupid email and I really don't want to do it, like that's where ChatGPT comes in. It's like, hey, ChatGPT, like email this business and tell them they're being stupid. And then ChatGPT will like write a professional email on my behalf. And then I'm like, cool, let's do that. So like I use it for non-technical stuff. It sounds like I you're see. using it for technical stuff. Um, we use GitHub Copilot for technical stuff. Now- yeah. If that had a had a data breach, yeah, that would be worrying, right? Uh, Frank, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I probably broke broke it. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel You're like to I, blame. I feel like I'm to blame because of the things <laughs> that I, I've I've been running some tests on te on on the AI, and like it was not I, able to handle you. It was yeah, too much. I've been testing its limits, like describe the surface of the sun without using the letter O. Or, <laughs> right. 
Frank. Oh, Frank. Did did you did, did you cause the breach? Don't, don't I think I was. <laughs> I was the AI. Oh no. That's another. There's another one. Uh, oh, really? Here I, I asked. I requested to compose lyrics for a 12 bar blues about the challenger's explosion <laughs> and donald trump's mansplaining oh. and i had a, i got a hit it goes like this verse one well the challenger's in the sky it's gonna soar up high but when it came down we felt the impact all around and it goes on like the, the chorus is Oh, the challenger's explosion <laughs> to the core. Now we're dealing with Trump's mansplaining. Oh, we can't take it no more. Frank, Frank, I, I, I think I need some guitar in the background. I, I, I need to, yeah, I need to, I need to listen to the full version of that song. Yeah, this, 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 this needs to be a, yeah, yeah, this needs to be a full song, Frank. Um, I'm ready to move on to the next topic. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start story number four. That was uh, freaking iconic. Frank, appreciate you for that. Uh, doing the Lord's work, as we say. Uh, this is going to be hard to top. <laughs> I got to be honest. Well, this will top right. it. Yeah, this will top it. Um, okay. <laughs> each leak site, breach forums, uh, shuts down. So... Breach Forums, if you guys didn't know, is one of the most popular dark web data breach forums. And it appears to be shutting down after federal agents arrested its top administrator last week. Um, the new admin of the forum who goes by the handle Baphomet said Tuesday that they plan to um, shut it down. Uh, FBI agents arrested Connor Brian Fitzpatrick. You gotta say that. Say his real name. And, and peak skill who also goes by the alias Pom Pom Purin. Pom Pom Purin. <laughs> anyway, so he was arrested for uh, one count of conspiracy to solicit individuals with the purpose of selling unauthorized access devices, uh, according to an affidavit from an agent. Uh, what do you guys have to say about this? So we uh, knew immediately when he was arrested because uh, breach forums is one of the forums that we monitor. Um, and he was uh, arrested and the forum didn't go down. And then he was quickly released. And I think everyone was like, oh yeah, the forum's about to go down. He, he cut a deal, that, that forum is gone. Um, and so like everyone, in the threat intel community was like yep this is gonna die like goodbye breach forms now breach forms replaced raid forms and breach forms has not been around for a long time it's it's like a year or less um but evidently he was known from raid forms as well yeah i mean it used to be raid right i mean and, and until it mutated into breach but uh yep well it used to be there Seized. Raid, Raid got seized by the FBI or yep. and then Breach happened like the next day and now Breached is gone. Uh, if Breach comes back, you know, you're basically talking with the FBI. So, uh, you know, uh, use that at your own risk. Um, yeah. But I mean, like it's whack-a-mole, right? Like uh, there's going to be super Breach or like killer breach or like null breach sec like there's good like it's all uh my bb right it's all just off the shelf form software so what do you think frank you you spent a lot of time in breach yeah, yeah. Allegedly. i i lost all my friends there um <laughs> I'm I'm so just, sorry. this is this is saddening um, I was wandering around and got into a picture of, of the actual admin of the forum, you know, this Pom Pom Purin, uh, the guy who got arrested. And surprisingly, I found he was, uh, I found out he was a kid. A kid was running the biggest market of stolen information. Wait, surprisingly, you said? I mean, did you expect a, a full grown adult doing that? I don't know what to, to, to expect anymore, but. <laughs> 
I, I mean, speak a lot of agony when it back comes then, to it. We, back then, we found that was funny that a kid ran the mob like in Robocop 2. Uh, <laughs> but now it, it's becoming the real thing. Well, I think it's been real for ages now. We're, we're just uh, getting noticed. A, a lot of these ransomware gangs are uh, run by like people in their late teens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the breaches and uh, uh, incidents that I've seen as well have been, I remember that one like uh, teenager who threatened to release um, therapist notes yep. in Finland. Yep. He was like 17 years old. Yep. He was going to release therapist notes of every person um, in the country. So There is a famous yeah. uh, botnet that was being run by a 17 year old in the UK. Uh -huh. And they had like a million infections, 10 million infections. I believe like the T-Mobile breach uh, was run by a 17 year old as well. So, wasn't the, le the leader of Lapsus a uh, teenager as well? Uh, oh, maybe that was a rumor, I don't know. But yeah, I think it was a, uh, a teenager. It's uh, Gen Z making a name for themselves. <laughs> Good for them. I mean, they are entrepreneurs for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start young. <laughs> I mean, shadow economy. Um, okay. yeah, pretty crazy. Well, but uh, we'll we'll see a new form by Monday. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's it's whack a mole. Plus, plus, you know what forms haven't gone down? The Russian ones. Yeah, all yeah. those Russian forms are healthy as can be. Yeah, that's true. I don't even so, know. yeah, you, you got the one guy who's in New York, not like the 20 Russian forms that have been running since like 2020. I have a feeling they're going to turn this into like a catch me if you can kind of moment. What do you think about that? I don't think hackers are good at running, so no. I don't. Oh, my God. No, I mean the FBI, Steve. Jesus. Uh, a lot of people are, are thinking breach might come back as a honeypot. So yeah, Sean, do you have anything to add? To no, that? I was just gonna say, yeah. At first glance, it's like, hey, great, we shut down a, a dark forum. <laughs> However, we all know that breaches lead to breaches, and to Steve's point, somebody else is, is going to fill that void. So short lived. Um, you know, for us, we're going to stay on top of that and make sure that we find uh, anything that's on the dark web that's talking about a breach. We're going to alert our, our our customers and uh, prospects to what's going on out there so short-lived but on the surface seems positive but it will get filled i mean like it there's there's some legacy threat intelligence companies that they just built their whole business around like scraping raid and then raid went down they're like now what do we do right and then breach happened now breach has gone down like we expect these forms to go down right like frank spends an ungodly amount of time looking for new friends online and you know there's new forums popping up every day so it's it's just sort of the nature of it. it it only made the news because like he was in new york he had a funny name and like they got him so yeah one thing i'm actually reading in another article is brian krebs uh reported in november of 21 about exchanges that he had with pom pom period regarding his hacking of the fbi database that showed yeah. poor coding. And he's, he is quoted, needless to say, this is a horrible thing to be seeing on any website, Pom Pom Curing said. I've seen it a few times before, but never on a government website, let alone managed by the FBI. So they had personal yeah. vendetta. So, so like he had, he made two mistakes. One is like, you don't mess with the feds. That's generally a rule for any hacker who wants to, you know, exist past 17. This is not for you. For any person, I would say, rather yeah, than just any, hacker. Like any person, don't don't mess with the federal government. And then uh, he went on record explaining his crimes. So, <laughs> like, running a bulletin board is not illegal, but going on record explaining how you committed crimes is certainly ill-advised, but I am not a lawyer, so. I feel like this is a conspiracy theory and that's all I'm gonna say about this. So. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, what's up <laughs> next? 
Okay. Um, so final story of the evening, everyone. I'm saving the best for the last. Uh, we're going to be talking about TikTok. We have more than 15 minutes to discuss TikTok. TikTok CEO, who lives in Singapore, by the way, uh, uh, hard flex. And it, he's in the hot seat. Five takeaways from his first appearance before Congress. So CEO Shu Chiu was grilled by lawmakers who expressed deep skepticism about his company's attempts to protect U.S. Uh, user data and ease concerns about its ties to China. Uh, we all know in the news that uh, TikTok has, uh, like the federal government is requiring employees to uninstall and not use TikTok. Governments like state governments, and not only in the U.S., this is happening all across the board. It's happening in Europe, happening in the U.K. Um, so talk to me a little bit about what do you guys think is going on and uh, your aggressive opinions about the situation. I'm really not familiar with what exactly would make TikTok that different from all the other, I mean, mm -hmm. social media platforms i mean i feel like steve has a really solid oh no i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go last because i have a lot of opinions yeah. but i think that's a valid point miguel how, yeah. how is tiktok different from yeah i mean any different than all the other platforms that would allow you to post like i don't know 30 seconds video i mean i really don't know i mean i'm well i'll tell you one thing literally okay. the first day uh that i met steve and the company in person um he figured out what my tiktok uh account was and it was an embarrassing name which is now dead uh because i was uh, removed by the algorithm because you got banned i got banned two times um for my usernames um but i think that was a little weird and he didn't tell me for like up until like a month but imagine like having an embarrassing TikTok username and you're going to, uh, you know, interview at like Google or Facebook and they see freaking absurd and inappropriate usernames and you don't get a job because of that, right? Um, that would be a shame, yeah. Yeah, so so I mean, I think that's but, one way it's but, different. But Facebook and Instagram are no different. They're all snitches. If, if you know yeah. someone... Facebook and Instagram will be like, hey, you want to go follow this person? But here's Who the you thing. know? Have you did you find my Facebook and Instagram? You did not. I have to tell you my Facebook for business. Okay. But uh Instagram, I, I, I'm just saying, like that's they're they're all snitches. And if you think different, you're fooling yourself. To the extent of TikTok though. I, I don't believe that any of these companies are in the business of privacy uh, or in the business of not broadcasting everything you do online to anyone who might be interested in seeing it. I would agree with that. I mean, privacy is not their main concern. Not at all. Like, do we all trust Zuckerberg? <clears throat> no. like, I thought I thought a few years ago we were hauling him in front of Congress about his invasions of privacy. Like and Twitter. What why is his company now good and TikTok's bad? But I, I want to hear yeah. what John has to say. Yeah. So I, I think you know, to the original question of how is this different than a US based social media company, I think that when you look at China, who probably, you know, per person has more threat actors, nation state type individuals that can consolidate information. And I think it's not just algorithms to see what people are watching, but can you engineer that to way that there's some destruction in what's actually the content that people are seeing? So I don't know, like if uh, Miguel Franco, maybe you can answer this question for me, um, but I found it really, really interesting how people started using TikTok as a search engine, uh, as opposed to Google. Mm -hmm. um how does that shift happen is my question because that was just like what the heck and you know that kind of like woke google up and then you have chat gpt and then google's like freaking out so they released their own so how, how does that kind of work um in this scenario T tiktok very quickly figures out what you want to watch yeah. and then it will you end up like doom scrolling like I, I'll get like talk locked where like my my finger can move, but like 
nothing else. Like I can't, I just have to stay zoned in for hours. And like, it's, a, it's addictive. Like let's, let's all be real. Like yeah. it's addictive. Um, but there's some technology there that is adding immense value in terms of recommendations, right? So I think that uh, there's no predicting the next social media uh, company and like Facebook's out, Instagram's out, TikTok is in. Yeah. And, and that's just the fact of the matter. So I'm curious, do you feel uh, this conversation has gotten into the, the subject of, hey, depending on the user, is it appropriate, right? We haven't talked about governments that are banning their users or their, their employees from using TikTok. In your opinion, do you think it matters who the user is and whether it's safe or not? So it never works out well if you try to ban technology. Um, if that technology is useful, people are going to use it. So like chat GPT, if the US government tried to ban US workers from using chat GPT, that'd be an ineffective ban because people would keep doing it, right? Um, it's kind of like these businesses that set up white lists on their internet. And they're like, you can only go to like Google and like Wikipedia. It's like, oh, cool. I'm going to use my phone, right? So like, that's why shadow IT exists is overly strict rules. Uh, as long as TikTok has utility, people will still use it. But I think that federal workers shouldn't be on any social media. Right. Like I, if you don't trust TikTok, then I got news for you. Don't trust Facebook. Right. Like Facebook operates in China. If you think Facebook's not going to sell your data to China, like they could. Right. Like there's legally I don't think there's any rules to prevent Facebook from selling your data to China. Same thing with Apple. Apple manufactures in China and Apple makes a ton of money in China right? Tesla, like Elon Musk is doing incredibly well because Tesla has been selling well in China. So it's like, at what point do you look at an international company, right? Arguably TikTok's international um, and be like, you can't use that. And, and so I think that like make, make more sensible rules, right? Like if you are handling classified information, maybe you are not allowed on any social media, right? Like, I, I feel like that, that's a pretty reasonable rule. Um, and ultimately, I think we should spend more time getting employees, whether they're federal or private, to know what is and is not acceptable to post rather than yeah. trying to ban platforms, right? Like, there have been people in the army mm -hmm. posting TikToks from secret military bases, right? Like, I feel like you could train them on what's good versus bad rather than trying to like ban a whole platform. Do you think there'll be any trends from governments to issue government issued devices, lockdown where people don't have that option? I, I think that if you have a government issued device, that that shouldn't have ever allowed TikTok. Yeah. But that also shouldn't have ever allowed Instagram or Twitter. Like, Let's talk about Twitter, right? Twitter is now bought by Elon Musk, but that very easily could have been bought by someone that's not residing in the US, right? Like companies can be bought, right? Uh, and, and clearly that happens. What's to prevent Snapchat, which it was the platform for like nude videos, what's to prevent someone from buying that and then getting installed all the archives of all the videos, right? Like ultimately, if you put it on the internet, you should assume it's public and you should assume that it's either gonna be sold to or accessible by nation state actors, right? E even if Facebook's never like a Chinese company, they've had what, 10 data breaches? So like, yeah. if you let the hacker in, how's it any different? A lot of, a lot of hot takes, glad we, glad we solved the TikTok problem. So we're all in agreement. Yeah. Go hack notice.